This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed good morning to you and welcome here at your very own first church as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Would you stand? Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia.
Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me now, I know he lives. He lives within my heart. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just in time I need serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he's living whatever men may say. Mm. If you'd join me in this ancient affirmation of our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Good morning, church. Happy Easter. So this came up in my Facebook memories this week, and it happened to be about maybe four years ago. So Dorothy was maybe four or five, and she probably doesn't remember this. But we were talking about, um, you know, Jesus, he, he was crucified, and then he was buried in a tomb. And she said, what's a tomb? 
which is, I mean, good question for a four or five-year-old. It's not really a word we use nowadays. And I said, oh, it's, it's like a cave. And she goes, like with bats? Like with Batman? And I was like, no, 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 Je- no, not Jesus and Batman. They were not in, no, like, yes, like a cave, but no, not, not like Batman. Je- Jesus was not Batman. Batman was not Jesus. But they do have, thank you, I need some laughs. He, they do have some similarities. So go with me on this. I told Scott, it's going to be out there. Go with me. So the, um, you know, the most of the superhero stories that we have in comic books, they're either aliens or they fell into a vat or something or they got bit by something or an experiment gone wrong. And Batman was a guy, right? He was a guy who just had a lot of money. That's, that's who Batman was. Jesus was a guy. He was the guy. I'm waiting for my youth to laugh because we talked about that this morning. He was a a guy who was also divine, right? Batman was in a very dark place, and he came out of it not as a savior but to save people, right? Jesus came out of it dark place as a savior to save people. So sometimes some of us can be in dark places, maybe depression, illness, pain, addiction, sorrow, all those things, dark places. But because of this day, we have the hope and the power of Jesus to come out of that, maybe with the help of others, but then we can go out and save others and get them out of there as well. Amen? Amen. So, see, I got there. Just took a little bit. Lord, uh, will you pray with me? Lord, we come to you today. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your son. And we thank you for the hope that you give to every single one of us that the day is not done when it is dark. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It wasn't too far out there. (laughs) Good morning and happy Easter to you. Yes. Happy Resurrection Day. Yes, amen. So if you can uh, uh, fill out your attendance, and if you brought family and just put and family, you know, that's okay for members. And those of you who are just visiting with us today, we're glad you're here, and, and we'd love to uh, send you a note next week. And But um, if you're just here for the day and with family, that's wonderful. It's a great time, and, and so we um, appreciate that so much. Thank you for joining us. The... Uh, We don't take the offering here anymore. We put it in the box in the back, and and that's okay. Uh, And I had to check to see if we had music, uh, but we're going right to communion. So thank you for your faithfulness. And so, Father, I bless your people in the name of Jesus Christ. Encourage their hearts. Strengthen them for the work that you have called them to. And bless them, Father. For I ask it in the name of Christ, our Lord. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church 
We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Take a moment and pray in silence and speak to God and listen to his response. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and he gave thanks to you. And he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as living sacrifices. We offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. For those who are going to assist, come at this time.
come and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, we're going to do this by intinction, so you'll be given a piece of bread and dump it in, dunk it in the cup. Try to keep your fingernails out. <laughs> Amen. Please come and receive.
Amen. You may be seated. In the words of Bill and Ted, this is a most excellent day. Hear the word of the Lord. After the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, isn't it interesting? The men fall down, but the women are still there to hear. <laughs> the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. <laughs> he, he is not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. And there you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. And suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him and clasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. And there they will see me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Would you pray with me and for me? Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. You know, it was just three hours and 22 minutes ago, now probably 52 minutes, that... Uh, gals got up and went to the tomb. And so we've gathered here today to celebrate the raising of Jesus Christ from the dead. He was raised. Alleluia. At dawn of the new week, the, the bright light of the sun, the brilliant light of the angel, and the glorious light of the risen Savior greeted the world. We, like the women, can only draw near, hold tight to Jesus' feet and worship him. That is all the answer that we really need. If you will draw near and grab his feet and worship him. The risen Jesus dispels all darkness, all fear of death, all the wearisome burden of sin, pain, and sorrow. Because he lives, we too can live a new life. The light of the gospel of the kingdom of heaven was not extinguished with Jesus' death. His resurrection has overcome the darkness, and the light of his life has lived through us, his disciples, and is going throughout the world. And this is Matthew's message. This is the message we proclaim to the world. Death is vanquished. Death is a stark and haunting reality, very much part of our personal story. Death was the dark reality stinging the hopes of Jesus' followers and seemed to overcome them. The gospel dispels the darkness and reignites hope with the only truth needed in Matthew 28, 5 and 6. Do not be afraid, for I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He was raised just as he said. 
You see, it is vital to grasp the truth of the resurrection. The work of the cross culminates Jesus' atoning purpose for his incarnate life and ministry on earth. The resurrection story is simple but profound confirmation. Jesus' death on the cross succeeded in carrying out his life's work. And once we grasp the truth, we recognize that no more need be said. The rest of the New Testament and our lives are the rest of the story. And so I pray that the Holy Spirit will bring the fullness of the resurrection power that we now stand in, in our hearts to transform us and in our minds to renew us so we may follow the Lord Jesus Christ wholeheartedly in word and in deed. Romans 5, 1 and 2 puts it this way. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Because Jesus lives. We can live a victorious as well as Jesus. We can live as victorious as was Jesus' own resurrection. We too have been raised with him in newness of life. Romans 6, 3 and 4. Don't you know... All of us who were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death, and we therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. There's a song by uh, Chris Tomlin, and it says this, Now I have resurrection power living on the inside. Jesus, you have given me freedom, no longer bound by sin and darkness, living in the light of your goodness, you have given me freedom. You see, the resurrection power that we're celebrating today and that this song speaks of has, has two effects on us as believers. It provides hope for our future physical resurrection. Those who have put their trust in Christ will be raised from the dead. You see, if Christ has been raised, then we who are in him will be raised as well. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also, 1 Corinthians 6, 14. It's not in the slides. The second thing it does is it enables us to live in godliness. The resurrection enables us to live in godliness now. We're spiritually united with him in his death and resurrection, which frees us from sin, Romans 6, 4 through 7. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. And if we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died is free from sin. And then the power of God, the, the same power that resurrected Jesus gives us everything we need to live a life of godliness. 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. 
through the though there he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them we may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption of this world caused by evil desires. The resurrection is the, the confirmation. The darkness of death has been conquered and Jesus offers the beginning of new life for all who dare to follow him. Uh, Romans 1, 2 through 6. The resurrection of Jesus fulfills the deepest hopes of humanity. By the resurrection of Jesus Messiah, he declared with power, is declared with power to be the Son of God. It is through the Lord Jesus Christ, regarding God's Son, who through the spirit of holiness was declared with power to be the Son of God by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, we receive grace to call people to the obedience that comes from faith, and you also are among those who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. It's through the Lord Jesus Christ all people may gain access to salvation through his sacrifice on the cross. And with his resurrection, the gospel of salvation is inaugurated with the sending of the Spirit of God at Pentecost, Romans 8, 29, and 30. In his life, death, and resurrection, Jesus is the pattern for those who will be regenerated and transformed into the image through faith in him. Romans uh, 8, 29, and 30. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son. God has predestined you as believers in Jesus Christ to be made into the image of his Son. That he might be firstborn among many believers, brothers and sisters, and those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. 2 Corinthians 3.18 And we, who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Jesus, the crucified one, lives as the risen one. The angel's message to the women designed to dispel the darkness of the pall of death held over them. They witness firsthand Jesus' death on the cross and his body being carried away and placed in a tomb. They come to prepare the body of him whom they had hoped was the coming one to whom John the baptizer pointed, but who is now merely Jesus the crucified one. And as they approach the tomb in the murkiness of dawn, an earthquake rocks the area. The stone is discovered rolled away. Fearsome Roman guards lie like dead men on the ground, and a brilliant angelic figure appears to them. And the angelic figure says, Matthew 28, 5, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. This angel then dispels the fear of the women, of Jesus' followers, and for all of history with these words, 28.6, he is not here. He was raised just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. The resurrection of Jesus bodily, physically, is held out as the only hope against uncertainty. You see, it's important to see the relationship between resurrection and crucifixion. Matthew has demonstrated the powerful significance of the cross, and he does not negate the fact. All the angel announces Jesus was raised. This doesn't mean that he was uncrucified. Rather, Jesus is no longer in the crucified state. He is now the risen one, 1 Corinthians 5, 17 through 19. And if Christ has been raised, your faith is, if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins, 
then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. And verse 20 says, but Christ has been raised. Without the resurrection, we who believe in Jesus are to be pitied and are hopeless, for the crucifixion in and of itself was not effective. The crucified one is victorious because he is the risen one. And we who by faith receive him as Savior are no longer in our sins because Jesus is both crucified and risen. Matthew teaches us how vitally important it is to maintain a resurrection perspective in life. The empty tomb is demonstrable fact of history to which the angel pointed. The women are probably just as frightened as the guards, but they listened to the angel and focused on the empty tomb. Their world was turned upside down. They still didn't totally get it. Mixed with fear and joy as they were, but as they encounter the risen Jesus, it all starts falling into place. They now saw who Jesus really was. And they fell down to worship him. And their, their lives would never be the same because their master and ours is not just another religious figure or authority. But he is the God of the whole universe. Our lives will be like theirs if we maintain a resurrection perspective. To stay fixed on the historical evidence of Jesus' empty tomb will open us to encounter him on a personal level in which he is not just a religious figure but our God. Matthew wants us to know Christianity is an historically based faith in which we find the credible evidence God has entered history in the person of Jesus Messiah. And between the crucifixion and the resurrection it must have seemed to the disciples as if things were coming to a tragic close. However, the reality is their discipleship to Jesus was being prepared to be infused with new reality. Likewise with us, the reality of our discipleship experience is grounded and gets its starting point from Jesus' resurrection. As we learn to view life through the empty tomb, it puts everything else into perspective. Our lives take on an eternal perspective so that we can put our priorities of time and finances and success in line with God's will for our lives. Likewise, our families become a shared life with a fellow disciple of Jesus as we support each other to fulfill God's calling for us individually and collectively. Similarly, whether it is the illness of our parents, the death of our child, or our, our own sudden battle with cancer. The empty tomb puts all our sorrows into perspective because we know Jesus lives. We can face tomorrow and plan for an eternity with him. The resurrection shows ultimate power. Jesus, who was seen as unable to save himself, is now the recipient of a power that raised him from the dead. And his resurrection is accomplished by an earthquake, an angel, and a huge stone removed from the tomb entrance. But those flexings of divine muscle pale next to the resurrection itself. In fact, there is no power like this known to any human. We have much power as humans to do good and much to do evil. And we've experienced that and we're seeing it happen in the world. But with all that power, we do not have the power to raise someone from the dead. It took the power of the Godhead to raise Jesus. And that is but a portion of his power as he exercises all authority in heaven and on earth. Romans 8, 11. The risen Jesus indwells each of his disciples by the Holy Spirit. And this is the kind of power available to us to live the kind of discipleship to which he calls us. Romans 8, 11, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. 
The Apostle Paul writes in Ephesians 1, 19-21, I also pray the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead. And that same power is working in you and I if we have Christ in our life. He exerted that power in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion. Notice the power Paul prays will be ours for our daily life. This is the power available to us to live out our discipleship to Jesus. Acts 1.8, this is the power of the Holy Spirit working in you. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth, even Abilene. And this power that comes from the Holy Spirit helps you and I to stand strong for the things of God. When we live with a resurrection perspective, we must focus our lives so that we can tap into resurrection power. We will then have the power to accomplish anything to which Jesus calls us. You know, that's the exciting thing about Jesus. When he calls you to do something, he gives you the power to get it done. Self-control, overcoming addictions, remaining faithful to our commitments, maintaining patience with a parent, demonstrating increasing dementia. Whatever in life comes our ways, discipleship to the risen Jesus includes the power to accomplish it. And this power inherited in Jesus' resurrection, which is working in our lives, gives us great boldness as we go about doing what he asks of us. As great as Jesus' public ministry was before his death, it was his resurrection that became the bedrock of the apostles' faith and their message, Acts 4.33. In the early church, uh, the central message is summarized like this. The apostles were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. And then in Acts 17, 18, Paul's message found focused on the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. And that was the basis of his theology. 1 Corinthians 15. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. And then the conclusion of that in verse 20 is, but Christ has been raised from the dead. Maintaining a resurrection perspective on life has, has the same potential to light our lives on fire with resurrection power. You know, and the interesting thing about this is you don't have to get knocked off your donkey in order to get it. And for those of you who aren't familiar, that's what happened to Paul in about Acts chapter 9 or 10. He was on the way to Damascus, and this bright light came, and he fell off, and he was blinded, and he went into town and got prayed for and received the Holy Spirit and was healed. So if we grant the benefits and the inherent power in the resurrection, what have we to lose? Death no longer has its sting. It can no longer keep us down as it was unable to keep Jesus down. And this gives us great boldness as we go about taking the message of the gospel to the world and committing our lives to Jesus' kingdom program. Because Jesus lives, we have an impelling purpose for our lives. Amen? Hallelujah.
was a bar and all the windows fastened down. I spent the night in sleeplessness and rose at every sound. Half in hopeless sorrow and half in fear the day would find a soldier's breaking through to drag us all away. Just before the sunrise, I heard something at the wall. The gate began to rattle and the voice began to call. I hurried to the window and looked out into the street, expecting swords and torches and the sound of soldiers' feet. There was no one there but Mary, so I went down to let her in. John stood there beside me and she told us where she'd been. She said they moved him in the night and none of us knows where. The stone's been rolled away and now his body isn't The winding sheet they'd wrapped him in was just an empty shell. And how or where they'd taken him was more than I could tell. Well, something strange had happened there, but just what I didn't know. John believed a miracle, but I just turned to go. Circumstance and speculation couldn't lift me very high cause I'd seen them crucify him and I saw him die back inside the house again the guilt and anguish came everything I'd promised him just added to my shame when at last it came to choices I denied I knew his name, and even if he was alive, it just wouldn't be the same. Suddenly the air was filled with a strange and sweet perfume. Jesus stood before me. just clung to him and cried. He raised me to my feet, and as I looked into his eyes, love was shining out from him like sunlight from the skies. Guilt and my confusion disappeared in sweet relief. just melted into alive. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Just a, a word of um, direction. The uh, lilies up here have tags on them for the, our at-home people. And so um, if you would take it to 
the person whose name is on there, their address is on there and everything. Most of them have a three by five card so you can don't have to hold the plan up to see what's going on. And if you would take that to that at-home person and bless them sometime today with that. And those of you who bought two because you wanted from one for yourself, they're over here on this side, way over, okay? So uh, thank you for doing that and ministering to the body of Christ that can't be with us. Go forth in peace. The love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion and power of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thank you.